Some two Sundays ago, on the 22nd of July, to be precise, Pastor Biala preached a message here titled, What? Don't look at your note. What was the title of the message? Don't look at your phone. Yes. I can hear you. Thank you. One good turn deserves another, and one bad turn will have its consequences. It was building on the foundation of the message I preached before then that what you do today will not only affect you, it will affect generations yet unborn. Not only that, a day of reckoning is coming when we will stand at the judgment seat of Christ to receive reward for everything we have done in the flesh, good or bad. As she began the message, she predicted that she was sure I was watching. I was in Rome. I watched from the beginning to the end. And I saw how you clap. You people. <laughs> you people. I saw how you responded. Bah, bah, bah. If I preach for hours like that, somebody will have to remind you. No, no, it's okay. You don't know the tremendous joy I have to see that God has given us in this house disciples that fit into the prescription of the Lord Jesus Christ, the company that would do greater works than he did. It gives me joy when I see my mentees and disciples stand in the center stage and God use them to be a blessing. How many of you are blessed by that message? Tell me the truth. Those who find faults easily Forget one thing. That that place does not belong to us. That when he sends anyone to you and you shut down your spirit, you shall cycle it yourself, not anybody else. Because he said, those who receive you, receive me. And those who receive me, receive him that hath sent me. As she was preaching that message, I'm saying, wow. 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 Let's appreciate the grace of God in Pastor Biola this morning one more time. To God be the glory, great things he has done. He will continue to use every one of you for his glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are going to see signs and wonders. The day is coming when not only they will outperform and outshine me, but I will just be happy. Take my seat and said, Lord, let thy servant depart. For my eyes have seen your salvation. That does not mean instant death. It means there will be other assignments because Simeon did not walk out of that place and you heard that he died. Such men don't die. They live on. Do you understand me? When you equip your saints for their work of ministry and they stand shoulder high above the perversity of gospel merchants. Then you know God has begun to reward you on earth. Because your sons and your daughters are now outperforming you. Uh, I outperform my mother. So my children must outperform me. That's a place of joy. Uh, one of the sons of Mr. Gumbi bought a new vehicle. And said I've paid for this. I'm sending it home. 
She was so happy. Not that she doesn't have a car, but Oman lo she yi fu mi el ribi. Oman lo she yi fu mi el ribi. Oman, oman. Yeah, yeah, oman, oman. That's it. It thrills me. I left Rome for London. And on Tuesday, the 24th, I was having breakfast. My sister-in-law who prepared the breakfast came to me and said, Uncle, did you by any means watch last Sunday's message at Lateran Assembly? At that time, I was thinking, is there anyone that has been good to me that I've forgotten? Because that's part of the message. I'm not sure you remember anymore. I'm not sure you remember that this man with all his braggadocio could not climb that pole. Leaning against this wall. They asked him to climb. He said, "Mm mm-mm. And then on that side, they put a ladder down that people were holding and he began to majestically go on the ladder one after the other till he got to the top. And she said, Biola said, Every wrong you step on are the backs of people who pray for you, who give you money, who encourage you. When you get to the top, don't forget them. So I was searching my mind if there's anyone I'd forgotten. And be honest with you, God is witness, there's no such person. That as a matter of fact, by his grace, had gone the extra mile of doing more than what they could imagine. Even for those who disparage me. That is the spirit of this house. You don't go about with bitterness and offense. Or what it take with dancing. You will know. It's transient. It's transient. And my sister-in-law intercepted my flow of thought. He said, did you watch that message last Sunday? I said, yes, from the beginning to the end. Wow. So Pastor Viola has become an established preacher. I said, thank you. Thank you. I hope those were our words. I wrote them down. And I said, even if a prophet is without honor in his own country, among his own people, there will be others who have been blessed and are saying so. I remember one day I returned. Uh, Engineer Shami Swami said, Pastor, Pastor, last Sunday, Pastor Biola preached one message. People queue up to the gate wanting to buy it. I said, praise God, hallelujah. And then they buy the tape and everything. She does not collect the money. He goes to tape account. Do you understand? But I'm too glad that others can do what I'm doing and they can do it better. Doesn't that give you joy? Be yes. about give you joy. <laughs> right in my lifetime, I will see you rise. Amen. I will see you do exploits. Amen. I will see you do greater works than I do. In Jesus' mighty name. There were two powerful statements she made. I can only deal with one today because of the depth of what I got from one sentence. You know, when, when God gives you depth and insight, one sentence can, can unravel so many things. The first sentence centers around Joseph and the butler. And he said, the butler forgot Joseph. And he said, can you imagine for two full years? And she moved on. And she made a second statement. There are people 
who when the tables turn. Know how to remember those who have done them a good turn. I'm going to take those two statements and weave a tapestry. I'm going to put some footnotes here and some debt that, uh, that will be a blessing to you and set you free. without taking away from what she said because there are people who truly don't remember anyone who has done them any good. In fact, they are self-made men. Have you? I'm a self-made man, idiot. Somebody gave birth to you, did not kill you while feeding you when you could not help yourself while changing your diaper, Mr. Self-made man. A self-made man is a disaster going somewhere to happen. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture and the people of his hand. Listen to me, friends. God planted people strategically in your life to help you so that you can fulfill destiny. If you can fulfill your destiny by yourself, it's not from God. Take it from me. So this morning, my message to you is titled, Man may forget, but God does not forget. Say that with me. Man may forget, but God does not forget. Amnesia is not a disease you find in heaven. Man may forget, but God does not forget. And I would like to read three portions of scripture. Short, short, short scriptures, but never out of context, to establish the truth that man may forget, but God does not forget. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 31. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 31. It reads, and I quote, For the Lord your God is a merciful God, he will not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which is what to them. Tell your neighbor, God is a covenant keeper. God does not forget. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. Not five sparrows sold for two copper coins. And not one of them is forgotten before God. We're talking of sparrows now, not you. And not five sparrows, go back, and not five sparrows sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God. Why? His eyes are on the sparrow. Next line. But the very hairs of your head are all counted. I can't hear you. (laughs) Do not fear, therefore, you have more value than many sparrows. What happens to the hair on your head? I'm trying to look for your hair. And you are trying to look for mine too. It's under. Doctor, it's under. It grows. Shave it. Okay. The hairs on your head are not counted. They are numbered. So if you are combing and one gets in the way, God said, that's number 1,372 air. Do you get that? That's how complex you are. That's how wonderfully and fearfully he made you. Last scripture. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 6. Hebrews 9, verse number 6. No, Hebrews 6, verse number 9. Hebrews 6, verse number 9. I beg your pardon. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation Though we speak in this manner. In what manner is he speaking? 
The verse before it, that the rain that falls, it brings forth herbs that is good for those who cultivate it. But if it brings thorns and briars, it's not fit for use, it's near being cursed. But beloved, we are confident where you are concerned because of the things that accompany salvation. Why was the writer confident? Next verse. For God is not unjust to... The day God forgets, it becomes unjust. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and stop ministry. Somebody say do. When you stop, he stops. When you continue, good measure, press down, shaking together, he packages your reward. God is not unjust to forget. You cannot get me not to continue to do good. It's too late. You cannot get me not to continue to give. It's too late. It's become a lifestyle. It's something I'm accustomed to. Your attitude cannot change me. Tell your neighbor, man may forget, but God does not forget. When Pastor Biola got to the point of the butler forgot Joseph for two full years, I paused and said, wow, new brooms sweep clean. Old brooms know where to go. Because when you read everything together, you discover he was not the butler. He was God. Are you ready now to learn? We are going to go into scripture and I will show you some things that will upgrade your perception that if somebody forgets you, it does not make you angry or bitter. You do not start telling people, because there is something about God and his word that if you pay good with evil, it is decreed and established that evil will not depart from your house. I'll come back another time. But let's see the scripture and see what really happened. The interplay of forces. God Almighty ensuring. That our beloved brother. The dreamer. Stays for another two full years. In that prison. Please note. That there is a big difference. Between deliberate forgetfulness. By individuals who have benefited from other people's good deed and seeming delays orchestrated by God. There's a difference between deliberate forgetfulness by individuals who have benefited from other people's good deed and seeming delays orchestrated by God himself. There's no delay in God. That's why I say seeming delays. In case of the butler, it does not appear to me that there was any deliberately, deliberate forgetfulness on his part. If he had deliberately forgotten Joseph, there would have been no reason for him to speak the way he did after he remembered. See Genesis 40, 20 to 23. It's important that we straighten this out. This is all I can handle for today. Genesis 40, 20 to 23. Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants. 
And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet, hello, yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, they forgot him. Isn't this pretty straightforward that it was his fault? Huh? Then listen to me. I say if it was deliberate forgetfulness, then he would not have spoken the way he spoke the day he remembered. This 41. <clears throat> Look at verse 1. Genesis 41, verse number 1. Then, I can't hear you. Uh, you're forgetting what I taught you. That one is not, then it came to pass. No, then it came to pass. It is called the force of destiny. Write the vision. Make it plain. Though it tarries, wait for it. It will not tarry. Though it tarries from the perspective of man, not from the perspective of God. And when he was 40 years old, Moses, it came into his heart to visit his brethren. So Genesis 41, verse number 1. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. And behold, he stood by the river. Who gave Pharaoh this dream? I can't hear you. God. Did he give it to him? Immediately the butler was restored. So the dream has something to do with the dreamer. How many dreams did Joseph have before this time? Two. How many times did Pharaoh dream? Two. So the two dreams of Joseph and the true dreams of Pharaoh had something in common and God was not ready for Pharaoh to dream it until after two full years. I will explain why to you. So therefore, there was nothing the butler could do. God just sealed that area, forget. Have you forgotten that when he gave birth to his first son, he deliberately named him Forget. For God has made me to. So God makes people to forget. <laughs> Do you? On, it is not deliberate. Forget. You, these things, are, they, they are interwoven except God shows you. You don't see them. You begin to blame those who are good to, who have not paid you when you expect them to pay you. And in God's timetable is not yet time because he's the timekeeper, not you. Our times are in his hand. Now listen to the butler. <laughs> Genesis 41, look at verse 9. Genesis 41, verse 9. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my faults this day. If it was deliberate, there was no point saying, I remember my fault today. It's not deliberate. Somebody locked it up. It's called God. Why? Let scripture interpret scripture. Not only did he have his first son, and he said, God has made me to forget. Tell your neighbor, God can make you forget things. Because to remember them will only afflict you with pain. And you misbehave. And you revenge. And you retaliate. And if you don't forget, you cannot be fruitful in the land. Are you listening to me? Okay, 
let's look at what happened in those two full years. Let scripture enter scripture. Come with me into the book of Psalm. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Psalm 105, verse 16. Psalm 105, verse 16 to 22. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. Who called for it? He destroyed all the provision of bread. He sent a man before them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons. Until. Until the time that his word came to what God had said to him has timetable. It's a schedule. You cannot fast track it. God is a timekeeper. Until his word came to pass. In those two full years, the word of the Lord tested him. Whether he will remain bitter, whether he will remain full of himself. I'm taking you somewhere. Open your eyes so that you gain understanding and don't blame thing, people for things that God is working out after the counsel of his own will. Let's read. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. Ah, don't stop there. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. KJV says senators wisdom. May God give our senators wisdom. Amen. Now listen. I'm going to tell you to write some things down. But let me put this in there. If the butler had remembered Joseph, the best that could happen is for him to be released and be irrelevant. You don't get it. If he had remembered earlier, I said, ah, I should not forget. Oh, there was somebody... Pharaoh had no need of Joseph. At best, you say, okay, he's your friend, let him go. And they set him free. So where would he go? Either return to Canaan <laughs> or look for a job in Egypt. Because according to God's schedule, it is not yet time. I must Lori Akpata ti Jesu ini mo wa o Ogun aye kan ko le ba mi leru mo Emi ti so wi pe toluwa lase ko ri ko ki hu lori apata lola oluwa ko so wa dele o karere oja je ka kere okun dele From school we were taught God's time is the best. Then we grew up. We want to replace his time with our time. Take your pen, your iPad, your low pad, your telephone, your iPhone, and write. When it comes to matters of destiny fulfillment, the timekeeper is God, not man. Our time is in God's hands. When it comes to destiny fulfillment, the timekeeper is God, not man. Our time is in God's hand. There is nothing Zachariah and Elizabeth can do. They can go to fertility clinics. They can try everything. It will not happen because God had purpose in his heart that was going to give them the forerunner of Jesus Christ and it could only be, the, the mother could only be pregnant with the child six months before Jesus would come. Yes. So let them pray. Go to the mountain top. Go to Mount, uh, 
Mount Abora, Mount Abera. Olomi yere o, Olomi ye, Olomi yere o, Olomi. You can go anywhere you like. Change your garment. Wear an adura outfit. Wear a lepe outfit until the appointed time. It is a waste of time. Anna was barren. Penina was married. Penina had sons and daughters. What are their names? I can't hear you. Huh? Sons and daughters with no names. And she provoked Anna saw. And God allowed it. Because Anna was not going to give birth to a son. She was going to give birth to a generation. A generation was going to be brought out of her womb. Do you understand? So until God is ready, stop wasting your time. Number two, if you're typing, if you're writing, there's nothing you can do to fast track anything God has promised. Stop wasting your energy. Koseni to daduro. Koseni to daduro. Eru olorun pa mi. Eru olorun pa mi o. Oun to ba ti binu lokan re. Koseni to le. Oso ile o le daduro. Aje aye o le daduro. When Moses tried to fast track the prophetic word given to Abram that your descendants will be afflicted 400 years, she was going to get them free at 360. He was the one that now went to the backside of the desert to, to, to go through training for another four years for the time to come into alignment and sync with God's timing. Listen to me. You read in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 7. It says, And when the time of the promise drew near, it's not hurt here. Ah! If you know what temptation and what pressure is on me to strike, to stab, to do this, I will not. You know why? Because I know whom I believed. What he has said, you bring to God is no man that he will lie, nor the son of man that he will change his mind. There's nothing you can do in the natural and the spirit. Pray, fast, sing, to fast track. And make happen before God is ready. Please listen to the testimony of Angel Gabriel in Luke chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. Luke chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. This was his testimony before Zechariah. Are you still here? Yes. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. I was sent to you to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you'll be mute. May God keep you mute. Until the fulfillment of his word, come out Fenora Shirai. So that you do not use your own mouth to destroy your own your own miracle. But behold, you'll be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place. Because you did not believe my words, which should be fulfilled. <laughs> which should be fulfilled 
in their own time. Brothers and sisters, there's something called the fullness of time. It is God's time. It is the best time. We must learn to keep to his timing. Why? you? We are asking God for things. You must not be in a hurry. He that believes shall not make haste. I don't have the time to show you the prophet who tried to fast track Babylonian captivity. <laughs> he said, in two years, captivity is over. And took the, the wood. <laughs> that Jeremiah put on his neck to demonstrate their captivity. Broke it! The dust said the Lord! In two years, captivity is over. Uh, Jeremiah and uh, Prophet, may the Lord bring it to pass. Oh. The prophets who are before me had prophesied this way, and this, this your own is fast track. Oh. If you give one thousand dollars, you get ten million. If you give this, this your own is fast track. Is casino, is gambling. Do you understand? This your own is, is quick. Behold, I lay in Zion. A stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. And Jeremiah left him and walked away. And God said, Jeremiah, go back to him. He has lied to the people. He will die this year. October is going to be a time to watch out. In Nigeria, on the 7th of October, the trumpet will sound in Nigeria. Take it to the bank. I say the trumpet will sound in the name of Jesus. And all the dead bones in the valley of dry bones will rise. A mighty army will rise in this nation. Nigeria will be saved. Nigeria will be changed. Nigeria will become great in my lifetime. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The zeal of the Lord shall accomplish it in the mighty name of Jesus. He died in the seventh month. Why? God said 70 years. He said two. What influenced him to do so? He wanted to tell the people what they would like to hear. Tell your neighbor there's something called fullness of time. It is God's time. It is the best time. Tell your neighbor, wait for God. May I let you into another secret? When Joseph asked the butler to remember him and mention him to Pharaoh after his restoration, he was only 28 years old. God's appointed standard age for rulership is 30 years. Are you still here? He was only 28 years. <laughs> So the last two full years was needed for Joseph's refinement if he was going to teach the senators of Egypt wisdom. At the age of 30, Joseph was in very good company of matured people in leadership position, whether in government or ministry. Give me Genesis 41, 46. Genesis 41, 46. Joseph was how many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Was he in a good company or a bad company? Let's see for ourselves. Second Samuel chapter 5. Second Samuel chapter 5. 1 to 5. 2 Samuel 5, 1 to 5. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and spoke, saying, Indeed, we are your bone and your flesh. And also in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And he, the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and be ruler over Israel. 
Therefore the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. It took 30 years to prepare him for his services of 40 years. Luke chapter 1, verse number 80. Luke chapter 1, verse number 80. So the child grew, that's John, and became strong in spirit and was in the debtor till the day of his manifestation to Israel. He was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. What time was that? How old was he? There was only six months gap between him and Jesus. So let's use scripture to interpret scripture. Luke chapter 2 verses 51 and 52. Luke chapter 2, 51 and 52. Then he went down with them and came to where? Nazareth. This is Jesus now. At the age of 12, he went to the temple. He outwitted all the doctors of the law. He asked them questions they could not answer. He gave them answers they did not understand. At the age of 12, that his ministry could not stand because there's a standard age required. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Next line. And Jesus increased in what? Wisdom. And what? Stature. And in favor with God. Amen. Now Luke 3 verse 23. Luke 3 verse 23. Luke 3 23. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age. So how old was John? When the day of his manifestation came. For Joseph to have been remembered by the butler and to have been set free, he'll be 28. It is not an accident that in America today, you cannot become a senator until you are 30. In Nigeria, it's 35. Governorship now amended 30. There is a reason God has raised the standard. If we have infantile Christianity, we have babies are pastoring babies. So there's a lot of immaturity in the church. That's why all that they know is signboard and gold. The process of discipleship. The pain of training is no longer there. It's now quick fixes, drive through, microwave Christianity. Tell your neighbor, a missionary is not a mission in a hurry. Godliness is not microwave. What exactly did God accomplish in those two full years in the life of Joseph? Just as Bumi Bakari said today that some things need to die and they all were black to kill it. Thank God they are dead. Amen. There were things in the life of Joseph that must die. It's called the I, me, my, and myself syndrome. When Joseph stood before his brothers to tell them the dreams, he said, come, I have a dream. Let me tell you my dream. We were binding sheep, and your sheep bowed to my sheep. He was in charge. And then he has a second dream, and he called his father now, and his brothers. He said, I have a second dream. You are angry with the first one. You understand me? If the first one upsets you, this one is going to set you up. I have another dream. The sun, the moon, and the 11 stars, they bow to me. Hey. 
And then before Mrs. Potiphar, kai, 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 kai. See the I, the me, the my, and Joseph at this time. When she stood before Mrs. Potiphar, Genesis 39, 7 to 9. Genesis 39, 7 to 9. Listen to Joseph. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. You know those eyes. <laughs> I know them too. Oh, yes, I do. I've been seeing your eyes. I'm just shutting it down. Shall I mention your name? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most of what I mean, they me. Ganga, eh, they lay me. They lay me. They lay me. That's all right. Cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, Lie. She was so audacious. Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Listen to this. Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house. And he has committed all he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I. Now, has he kept back anything from me but you? Because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So he was serving God in the eye's strength. He didn't acknowledge God. He just said, I will not want to sin against God. But he did not acknowledge God as the one giving him grace to live. For you are saved by grace through faith. And that not your own is a gift of God. Not of works. Not of determination. Not of willpower. Lest any man should boast. I am what I am by the grace of God. And you would think, when they threw him to jail now, he had learned his lessons. Let's see what he said to the butler. The I, the me, the myself, and the mind syndrome in Joseph. Genesis chapter 40, verse 12. Genesis 40, verse 12 to 15. And Joseph said to him, the butler, Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm looking for. Oh, yes, it's what I'm looking for. I will get it at the bottom of that. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of eight. The three branches are three days. Now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. Read this with me. But remember me. One is well with you. And please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh. And get me out of the, How many times? Four. Let's read on. For indeed, I was stolen away. Five. From the land of the Hebrews. Also, I have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. How many times? Me and I. Six times. Is this seven? Six times. Okay, whether it's six or seven, that's it. It's compounded. It's I, me, myself. Ah, when I got to Lagos, hmm? <laughs> you need to see what I went through. I went through a lot. Nobody knows the trouble I see. No, it's I, me, my, myself. Look at Nebuchadnezzar. Is this not Babylon that I built for? That was what kept him in prison for two years. Because he must get to the place as a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, and yet not I. It is Christ who lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I will not frustrate the grace of God. Those two full years were needed to purge him. 
It was not solitary confinement. It was solitary refinement. Because when he eventually came out of that prison and he stood before Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked him a question and he answered back. Genesis 41, 14 to 16. Genesis 41, 14 to 16. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved, changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, are you there? I have heard a dream and there's no one who can interpret it but I've had it said of you that you can understand the dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. That was his two years diploma. You understand me? That was a two years diploma that he got that he now began to give glory to God. When he sent his brothers, he said, it is not you. That's, it is God who had sent me ahead of you to preserve a posterity. Until God purges you of your I and me syndrome, he's not going to use you. He will allow all your ideas to fail. He will not give you his own ideas until he receives all the glory. Here comes my punchline. Are you enjoying it so far? Is it making sense to you? Uh-huh. Here comes the punchline. Mm. whenever things don't go according to your plan as you envisage please don't unduly stress yourself it may be because God has a better plan the butler did not have the key to the office of the prime minister hello I said the butler did not have the key to the office of the prime minister. If he had access to make anyone prime minister, he would offer himself. Only God can make you, nobody can make you. Do you understand me? If he had done anything that he could have done, would have been to set him free and he would become irrelevant. In the fullness of time, the one who has a key to make him what God has made him, and I said, I am Pharaoh. By your word, the whole of Egypt will be governed. And at the mention of the name of Joseph, every name was bowed, including Potiphar and his wife. Every name. Tell your neighbor, wait for God. Don't stress yourself. The reason there is a seeming delay is because God has a better plan for you. I don't know about you, he has a better plan for me. All the defections taking place. All the mistakes and the blunders. I know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And who are they called according to his purpose. My final word to you today therefore. On this issue of people forgetting your good deeds towards them. Is very simple. People may forget. But God does not forget. Isaiah 49, verse 14 to 16. Isaiah 49, verse 14 to 16. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a one forget a nursing child? And not have compassion on the son of a womb. Surely they may forget. Yet I will not forget you. See, I've inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. You don't know when you lift up your hands and push. You are downloading something from his palm. Don't take your palm to a palm reader. He inscribed what he inscribed here. That's why yours is like no other person. He inscribed it on his palm. That when you do like this, the palms meet. You download stuff. He gives you ideas of what to do next. Do you understand? Somebody lift up your hands and praise his holy name. 
praise his holy name, praise his holy name, praise his holy name, thank him, thank him. Man may forget, God does not forget. My God will remember you for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you take a little bit more? A little bit? Or shall I leave it for another time? Just a very little bit. Uh, uh, one for the road, thank you. Uh, do you need one for the road to take away with you? Indeed, men may forget the promises they have made to you. It could be due to illness. It could be due to circumstances and situation. They have just forgotten. But don't be angry. Don't be bitter. Just pray to God to send somebody that will quicken their understanding. That will bring what they have forgotten into their remembrance. I present to you Bathsheba, David, and Nathan. David had made a promise to Bathsheba. That before God whom I stand, your son Solomon will be king after me. But now the king was old. And they needed to keep him warm. And Adonijah hijacked authority. Got all the chariots <laughs> and all the horses parading the lands of Israel. And invited all the who is who, including Abiata the priest and Joab the chief of Amistad. I hope somebody is listening. Kadarami Kosani Tole Yikwada Yeti Daju Kadaramio Kosani Tole Yikwada Yet Oju Take Ojura. Oju te lekpe, ekpe oja. They actually ordained Adonijah and called him Long Live King Adonijah. And the promise to Bathsheba were only known to three people apart from God who gave the promise. Known to David. Known to Bathsheba and David's account, accountability partner, Nathan. So when Nathan saw that was happening, he came to Bathsheba. He said, Bathsheba, your head is still on your neck. You and your son will be slaughtered. They will give your file to EFCC very soon. <laughs> But Sheba said, what do I do? He said, go before David and just remind him. Did you, have you changed your mind? And while you are talking to him, I walk. Oluwa oni pala anu e. And it's your shanu e say Oluwa oni pa. Those who will quicken the understanding and open the minds of people that will favor you, they will not die before you are favored. In the mighty name of Jesus, they will remember you. But Sheba went before the king and did your business. Long live King David. Have you changed your mind about my son Solomon? Is it Adonijah now? He said, Adonijah came. Uh, he just came to himself. He said, who is there? He said, Nathan. And Nathan said, my Lord, Adonijah has just been made king and they have said long live. He said, no, no, no. Take the meal upon which I sat. He was sitting on the meal of ambition. You are going to sit on the meal of destiny. Take the meal upon which I sat. Take the crown upon my head. Take to give you an anoint him and say, Long live King Solomon. All this somebody forget is because God is not ready. The only prince that was not invited to the party was Solomon. Odotemamu, Nikojani, Moni Oka, King Joker, 
mone unto njoka loka nje mone unto ja ma je bi to ka walu ma ba oka you don't need la la koko fefe by means of strength shall no man prevent lai pe lai ji no i am fair day hey lai pe lai ji no baba o e o wa pa mi du be hey lai pe lai ji no to note the disposition of Solomon. God spoke to David, I will give you a son and he shall be a man of rest. While all other princes were going for the party and they rejected him and they did not include him, he just sat at home. Because he was a man of rest. He did not tell his mother. He did not tell anybody. God sent an emissary. A prophetic emissary. To go and do. <laughs> for him what God had purpose. I appeal to you. Don't pray for your enemies to die. If they die. God cannot set his table. Is setting a table for you in the presence of your enemies. <laughs> Somebody asked me and said, what's your favorite car? What real car that you like? I said, I look around the world. There's no other one that I want anymore. But there's one called the presidential fleet. <laughs> Do you understand me? Like, by like, you know. I am in fair day. Like a light, you know. You'll be there. Amen. I will see you at the top. Amen. Our president will not die. Amen. Our president will fulfill his term. Amen. God will lay his hands upon him to do good. Amen. He will do well. Amen. Nigeria will be saved. Amen. Nigeria will be changed. Amen. And Nigeria will be great. Amen. In my lifetime. Amen. Because since I've been to school. And I've been taught arithmetic. I've seen that 16 does not come before 15. And for as long as 16 comes after 15. What God has said. It will bring to pass. I will remind you. That by God's grace we told you so. Hallelujah. We are going to stay in our house. When they will say, 
Is it not true that was doing it in the day of Saul? The kingdom is yours. And we will restructure. We will bring Nigeria into alignment. To this end was I born. For this purpose came I into the world. You will know your destiny before you die. And God will grant you grace to fulfill it. There's no delay. I don't have time to show you Ezekiel 12. Maybe some other time. He said, what do they say concerning this proverb that they say every vision is prolonged and is delayed? He said, no, no more postponement. I'll fulfill my word in his time. I watch over my word in told Jeremiah to perform it. God's word in your life will be fulfilled. No delay. So, ma'am, the butler did not forget Joseph. God was working out in those two full years to make him a prince that will rule with justice. Lift your hands to heaven. We thank you, our Father. We bless your holy name. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you. Your word is true. Gives us comfort in our soul in the midst of our affliction. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 1, and Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Lateran assembly is your time. Amen. I say it's your time. Amen. I say it's your chance. Amen. Even your enemies will testify. Amen. Receive it by faith. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 